Today is actually Brittany and my seven year anniversary. And you know you found the right one when, after our morning coffee date, we're going straight to the fish store. Other than like a few detritus worms that I've noticed on the bottom, there's like these little wiggly guys in here. You might have seen them in your own tanks. Let's try to find one. They wiggle around like they're on cocaine. And uh, I think they're midge fly larvae. And then I'm pretty sure they hatch and they turn into little gnats, little midge flies. As soon as we get anything in here, fish or shrimp, I'm sure they'll crush these things. This particular dragon stone was really soft, so the wood did not hold onto the dragonstone. And actually, the dragonstone broke off and is still attached to the driftwood where I attached it. The wood is just kind of hanging out in here now. So I'm gonna drain the tank so I can plant the foreground first, and then I'll fill the tank back up a little higher so I can plant the, the background. Yay, 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 yay. And we're gonna call this a water change too. I'm not gonna put this water back in. This is gonna have all of the nutrients that the substrate released right away. It's always a good idea to do a water change right after you um, set up a, a planted tank with nutrient-rich substrate. Here we go guys, this is the moment I've been waiting for for months. Like, two, three months. In this bag, we have from the fish store, some shrimp for the shrimp tank. And not just any shrimp. I wanted red crystal shrimp, but we have red cherry shrimp over here. So I figured we'd go with something a little different in color. Black crystal shrimp for this tank. Six red crystal shrimp were gonna be about, was it $60 I think? Three black crystal shrimp were $39.99. So I got three I got three today. I didn't have big enough balls to buy six, even though that would give you better odds of breeding and stuff. So we got three. Hopefully they're not all male or all female. But I did a water change in the tank this morning, tested uh, the hardness. I added my shrimp remineralizer this morning. Uh, that's the one I'm using. 
you know, the hardness and everything should be perfect. This tank is plenty cycled. There's a few snails in here. There's a ram's horn snail. I originally added bladder snails because I really needed something to take care of the algae. Uh, and I wanted a different snail than the ram's horns that I have in here. And guys, I do not personally agree that there are pest snails. Even though in this tank, there's there's quite a few ram's horn snails, but there was way too much shrimp food in here in the very beginning, because I was just trying to get these guys to breed and grow and be healthy and stuff. So I was probably feeding them a little too much. You will not have an overabundance of snails, pest snails, unless you're overfeeding the tank. This tank only had algae in it. I was not adding any food. I put like six bladder snails in here. There, I probably could only find three now. Not only have they not all survived because there wasn't enough food in there, but they haven't bred out of control. So if you're not overfeeding your tanks, you won't get out of control snail populations and the snails will totally help keep your algae in check. They won't eat your plants. The only snails about to eat plants, I think, are apple snails and mystery snails, I think both of them. One of them I don't think does. I don't have them, but I've heard. Someone in the comments can correct me. Um, I believe one of those will eat plants. Ram's horns, nerites, bladder snails do not eat living plants. They will eat dead and dying plants. If your plants have nutrient deficiencies and the leaves are beginning to die, they may eat your leaves, which is what might bring people to the conclusion that they're eating their plants, but it's really just the dying leaves they're eating. So they're really just helping keep the essentially stops the plant from melting further because they arrest the spots of the plant that are decaying because they're eating them. So snails are just part of a healthy ecosystem. I would really encourage you guys to put snails into all of your tanks if you can. Obviously certain fish like cichlids are going to eat them, but there are other things you can, other fish you can put in there that are going to do a similar job to snails like algae eaters and things like that. Let's get the shrimp out of the bag, get them acclimating, and then we're going to put them in their new tank. Oh boy, oh boy, there they are. They're beautiful. I've got the lights turned down a little bit on this tank, so this should not stress them out too much. Yes. Oh, they're gonna look so good in here. So I've been running this tank with a little hang in the back filter just to help the tank cycle, keep everything flowing. I am gonna take this filter out because I don't have anything on the filter inlet and they will certainly get sucked up in there. So I'm gonna take the filter out. We're gonna let the shrimp acclimate, temperature acclimate, probably at least 30 minutes. And then maybe halfway into that, maybe 15 minutes or so, I'll start adding some water from the tank into the bag. We'll get them acclimated. I don't really wanna worry about a drip acclimation. I will just do it slow enough. I can be around and we'll just add some water slowly. Ah. Uh. I grow my own aquarium plants, and you might be wondering why there's not more plants in here. Well, if you watched my video that I talked about the plants I bought on eBay, a lot of those plants, I think I bought three plants from eBay, from the seller on eBay, and they're in here. So supposedly this Rotala rotundifolia is Rotala rotundifolia red, and the tissue culture that I've been growing from Petco is just regular Rotala rotundifolia. So I wanted to keep them separate. I thought this would be more red, so I put that one in here. And I didn't want to put any of mine in here because I wanted to keep the, if the genetics were different, the strains were different, I wanted to keep them keep them separate. Which, it's funny because the ones that I got from Petco are more red, and that one didn't say it was a, specifically a Rotal red. There's a lot of Ludwigia illustrious. That microphone's backwards. I've got to get a new microphone, guys. I need a lav, because I just did a whole thing where the microphone was flipped around. We've got an Alternanthera Renacii Mini, Limnophila sessiflora. We've got Rotala rotundifolia Red, and I also put some Ludwigia palustrius from this other tank over here, my cherry shrimp tank. There's a lot of Ludwigia palustrius over here, and it's it's like it looks really good, very red, very vibrant. So I put that in here. We have Anubius nana petite. The Monte Carlo carpet has been a little taken over by algae, and it's just the like soft algae. These shrimp and snails, combination of snails that are in here and shrimp will demolish all of that. A lot of this soft hair algae is caused from just too much lighting, too long a photo period. So I shortened the photo period and I reduced the lighting level a little bit. So with the snails in here and the shrimp now, we should be able to get a hold of the algae, get these plants to start growing much more thick, and uh, hopefully there are male and female shrimp in here. 
so we can get these guys to breed. Like my cherry shrimp, which are doing very well. I think it's been about 15 minutes for these shrimp. I'm gonna open the bag. We're gonna add a little bit of water. I'm also gonna test the TDS. Measuring the TDS isn't really the best marker of figuring out what the, or the general hardness and carbonate hardness, but it'll give us an idea of if they're acclimated slow enough. pH really doesn't have, have that big of an impact. It's probably mainly temperature. pH, I guess, would be second. Hardness is more for the longevity of the shrimp and then um, being able to build their exoskeletons and stuff like that. So those numbers need to be right. I'm just curious to see what the general hardness and the carbonate hardness figure out what it is in the bag and what the shrimp were kept in at the store. So let's open the bag up and start adding some water slowly. My TDS pen here can also take the temperature of the water. So we will change the mode to temperature Fahrenheit, check. 73.5, 73.4, 73, it says the same temperature. All right, so it looks like the temperatures are good. They're within like 0.1 of a degree, if this thermometer is correct. And so now I guess we will measure the TDS of the water. Parts per million, 114, 147, 148. So I could probably bump my minerals up just a little bit. It's been about an hour. If you guys are acclimating your shrimp, you might want to let them go a little bit longer. I've read an hour to two hours for Caridina shrimp. That probably wouldn't be a bad idea considering these are a bit more sensitive than Neo Caridina shrimp. I think our water parameters are pretty close. We're just gonna go ahead and get them in the tank. Here we go. There's two, and the third one. It looks so good in here. I think that one's already munching. It's eating. Maybe we can see from the top. Nice. This guy's got a lot of white on him. I believe the more white, like black crystal shrimp, I believe the more white makes them a higher grade. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! They definitely don't look very stressed right now. There's one, finding some food. The two things that I'm feeding my cherry shrimp right now are two products by Glass Garten. Glass Garden, it's a, like a German brand. Shrimp Baby and Bacter AE. The Shrimp Baby is like a very fine food powder. And from what I understand, the Bacter AE, it's like a prebiotic. So it feeds the bacteria that the shrimp will eat in the tank. They can also eat the prebiotic and it, it's nutritious that way too but it stimulates the growth of biofilms and stuff. So that would feed any size of shrimp. And they have a larger, like an adult shrimp variety, which is like bigger pellets, I guess. I don't have that one yet, but they've done so well on the baby shrimp, I haven't really needed to go out and buy the other one yet. I'll probably get that soon because the baby shrimp or the shrimp baby seems to, it seems to be a little more messy where it, if you wanted to get a, one of those little glass cups you put in the shrimp tanks and send the food right down so it doesn't get you know, keeps your tank a little cleaner if you can just have it in one spot with larger pellets. So I might try that in the future, but these two are really great so far. I'm gonna add some of the Baxter AE right now and maybe a little bit of the other one. I don't want them to be stressed in any way in the first 24 to 48 hours. So we're gonna put a little bit of this food in there. Baxter AE right here. Let's get a little scoop. Put some of that in. The cherry shrimp actually come up to the top and like eat the surface of the water. They'll hang out up there and get it. We're gonna do a little bit of the baby shrimp as well. It really reminds me of just like a fish fry, like a first bites kind of powder. I'm gonna get a little air stone in this tank just to get some surface agitation, but all this stuff is just gonna float down. You can see it already sinking down and they're just gonna eat that stuff up, guys. That will be gone in like no time. It's like snowing. Oh, I think he's getting some. These guys are coming too. Look at them. Look. Look at this. Look. 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 It looks like the shrimp are doing really good. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss updates on this tank as well as all of the other videos I've got planned. Leave a like if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one.